Welcome to the Pro version of the Multifocal Lens Analyzer. In this tutorial, we will show you how to use the app for the first time. Remember that to validate access to the Pro version, you will need to have your iPad connected to the internet every time you start the application. We are on the subject screen, with two main modules, subject and exams. In the subject module, you will be able to store each of your research subjects via pseudo identifier. To create a new subject, click on the plus button at the top right. In the demographic data window, you will need to insert a unique numeric pseudo identifier for each patient, the gender, and the year of birth. After clicking on save, you have created your first subject. You can use the search engine to search for a subject within the list of subjects. At any time, you can go back to edit the subject data by clicking on the age, gender or number of exams icons. To view all subjects again, simply slide your finger over the list of subjects. Subjects can be assigned multiple exams. To assign a new exam to a subject, select the subject, and click on the plus button at the top right in the exam table. A pop-up window will appear where you will have to select whether the examination is to be performed monocularly, on the right or left eye, or if it is to be performed binocularly. We will start with the right eye. The tests must be associated with a protocol. Protocols allow you to create a group of subjects with common characteristics, who are tested under the same measurement conditions. For example, you can create a Liberty LASIK protocol, for patients who after LASIK have been implanted with the Liberty Multifocal Intraocular Lens. Click on the None button to access the list of protocols. In the protocol list, you can create a new protocol or edit the name of a protocol. If you choose to delete a protocol that has associated exams, the exams will be unlinked from the protocol, but it will not be removed from the subject. To create a new protocol, click the plus button. In this window, you have the configuration of the protocol. Think carefully about the measurement conditions before creating the protocol, as these cannot be changed once the protocol has been created. The purpose of not being able to modify the test options is to ensure that all subjects measured under the same protocol are measured under exactly the same conditions. The configurable options of the protocol are presentation distance, Sloan or Snellen optotype and defocus range. An additional step of plus or minus 0.25 diopters can be made around 0 diopters for examinations with extended depth of focus lenses. Finally, read the calibration section of our website to find out what background brightness and gamma you should select. The reason why our apps are only available for iOS devices such as the iPad and not for Android tablets is because this is the only way to ensure that without calibrating your iPad, and using the default values, the error that can be made in the measurement is less than 6 candles per square meter. This is well below the illumination biases that many illuminator cabinets tend to have. Before starting any kind of research, Please carefully review the standard section of our website to set up your protocols according to the measurement standards. This will allow your results to be perfectly comparable to those of any other researcher around the world using the application. Check that both the automatic brightness of your iPad and the sleep mode are turned off, that you have turned on the iPad about 15 minutes before starting the measurements, and extremely important that the refraction that you will insert in the additional section as we will see below is set to infinity. This is the most common error, which is why the defocus curves often appear offset from the zero diopters point, as in clinical practice, the refraction at the presentation distance of the test is usually noted, and not the refraction set to infinity. Please read this entire section carefully before starting to use the application, and do not hesitate to ask any questions you may have. Let's create our Liberty LASIK protocol. Present it at 4 meters, with Sloan letters in the default range, without the additional step of 0.25 diopters, and modifying the brightness to 40%, which corresponds to 85 candles square meter on this iPad. Remember that this value does not have to correspond exactly to the one you have to enter, 
because on the iPad with which we have conducted the video tutorial, we have made a custom calibration. Click on save and we have created our Liberty LASIK protocol. Select the protocol and add it to the exam by clicking on add to exam. Before starting the exam, we will need to select the exam type, and fill in the additional information associated with the exam. Click none to select the exam type. For example, we are going to perform a contrast sensitivity defocus curve. Click on CSDC, then click the additional button to access the additional information window. In this window, you will be able to select the patient's pupil diameter, exclude the examination from the global analysis, so that it will not be taken into account in the statistics section that we will see in other videos. For example, in cases of ocular complications, or when exclusion criteria are met. We can also select the follow-up, period. For example, if the measurement is preoperative, or any of the follow-up months from one month to more than 12 months. Finally, very important for the development of the test, we find the option distance corrected, for measurements with the best corrected distance refraction. If we choose yes, we will have to select the residual sphere that was obtained for the correction of the patient at infinity. This value shall be taken into account when establishing the value of the joint sphere, in order not to accumulate more than two trial lenses, one sphere and one cylinder in the trial frame. Let us imagine that the patient has a residual of minus 0.50 diopters of sphere, minus 0.50 diopters of cylinder, at 90 degrees. We will have to select only the spherical component. So, the spherical component is minus 0.50, and we click on the save button. Before we start, the patient will be positioned 4 meters away from the iPad, because we have selected it in the protocol, avoiding any light source that could reflect on the screen. For this purpose, we can use a tripod with a slight inclination, which allows us to avoid any kind of reflected light on the iPad screen. The patient should be compensated on the test spectacle with a cylinder of minus 0.50 diopters at 90 degrees. Why don't we correct the sphere at this point? Well, we are moving on to find the answer to this question. Click on test and read the warning message carefully. Next sphere represents a combination of spherical lenses, the aim of which is not to accumulate all of them in the test spectacle, but simply to correct various conditions with a single spherical lens. The 0.75 diopters, represents the value resulting from compensating the proximal vergence, in this case 0.25 diopters, because we present the test at 4 meters, plus 1 because we started from a range from plus 1 to minus 4 diopters of defocus lenses, and also adding the spherical component of the patient's refraction, which as we saw was minus 0.50 diopters, and which we had inserted in the additional information. We insist again, the subjective refraction entered in the app is not the one obtained at the distance at which you have refracted, but its adjustment to infinity. If you have refracted the patient at 4 meters, obtaining a sphere of minus 0.25 diopters, the refraction at infinity will be minus 0.50 diopters. From now on, the clinician will only have to worry about replacing this spherical value that appears in each of the alert messages during the test. Put your patient now, the spherical component, therefore, will have in trial frame plus 0.75, minus 0.50 diopters of cylinder at 90 degrees, and click OK to start the test. During the test, you will only have to click on the letters that the patient responds to. The application will automatically adjust the size of the optotype or its contrast, depending on whether we measure the visual acuity defocus curve or the contrast sensitivity curve. If the patient cannot recognize the letter, or the answer does not match any of the options to be clicked, click on the question mark button corresponding to an unrecognized or erroneous letter. We must continue this process until the alert appears with the next spherical lens to be entered. The defocus curves, although the application reduces the measurement time to about 7 to 8 minutes, are a procedure that can be tiring for the patient. We recommend at all times during the test to maintain communication with the patient, 
encouraging him or her to read the next letter, and not to spend too much time trying to recognize it. If the patient hesitates to answer, we must make them understand that this is a normal process, as we are intentionally exceeding the limit of their vision. If you have an iPhone or another iPad connected to the same Wi-Fi network, you can use this second device as a remote control to avoid moving the iPad to the patient, saving time during the test. Once all the possible defocuses have been run through, the procedure will end with the defocus curve appearing on the iPad screen. Don't forget to periodically make backup copies sent to your email, for which you will need to have an email account set up on your iPad. Data is stored exclusively on your iPad, deleting the app or any data will mean a loss of data if you have not backed it up.